what's happening everybody, this is Bones. Uh, I've had a few comments on my previous videos about uh, linking Fruity Loops with uh, Novation Impulse 61. So I'm going to show you guys how to link certain parameters and you know figure out how to get the thing working. Alright All right, guys, here I opened up Fruity Loops and I'm going to get ready to link every fader which are these onto Fruity Loops. Now to do that you want to go up to the top right next to where your transport buttons are. There's going to be a button that you click. It's going to say link to or multi-link to controller. I'm going to zoom in on that button for you. It's right there where my mouse is. Alright, so you want to click that. Now after you click it, you want to drag, starting from the first mixer channel, drag this fader up, then the second, third, fourth, do as many faders as you want. I'm going to do nine because my, uh, my controller has nine faders. Now after you do that and it's ready, I'm going to drag the first fader and then this little screen's going to pop up. When this pops up, it's going to show you an inserts, the first box. You want to make sure it's on one out of nine inserts or say you, say you have six faders. Make sure it's one out of six. You want to start on number one. Start one. After that one's done, you're going to go to two, three, four, five, six, all the way through nine. Now that is going to link all your faders to the mixer. So now you can see every time I move a fader, I'm going to be moving number five. And you'll see on the screen, the fifth fader is moving as I'm moving. So that's that's fairly simple, and you can do as many. I mean, you can do a lot. My MIDI controller has uh, 16 different, yeah, has 16 different MIDI channels. So that means I can go starting from MIDI channel one, do nine nine faders, and then go to MIDI channel two, do another nine, then number three, and so on. So on this, if you guys do have the uh, Novation Impulse 61, you'll see on this screen here. It's going to tell you, well first you're going to want to click MIDI channel and it's going to tell you what MIDI channel you're on. Say number one is the one I just preset. I'm going to turn the dial to number two. Once it's on that I'm going to hit MIDI again. Now I got blank faders. So I'm going to relink all nine of these faders to the next, to the next uh, amount of faders on the mixer, which for me it's going to be number 10 all the way through uh, 19. So uh, that's how you mix the, or link the mixer faders. Now, uh, let's see, for the drum pads, it's, it's pretty much the same thing, but in Fruity Loops, I'm, I'm assuming everybody here watching is using, is using uh, FL Studio. So I'm gonna go to channels, I'm gonna add one, and you're gonna see the FPC. Click on FPC. Now this thing, just like I was telling you with the keyboard, it has two banks. So bank A and then bank B. So there's actually 16 pads on A and 16 on B. What I do, I don't link these to the pads on my, on my controller because I really don't like the pads. <clears throat> what I do is I link each one of these to a key on my keyboard. So I already have this set up. So what I did with this one, I have different drum kits, bank A and bank B. Starting down here, I linked. So you can see half of my keyboard on this one is set up with, with different percussions that I use. And to link, Say you want to link how I did uh, with half of the keys on your on your keyboard starting down here. So I have, I mean you could do 61 but you have to use two different FPCs. So each FPC allows you to do 32 keys. So I'm going to go to the first pad now to drag instruments into this little thing. You're going to go to your browser over here. Say you find a kick drum you like, you're going to drag the kick on top of whatever pad after it's dragged onto the pad, you'll see right here is where the track is. 
Now to link this pad to any key or pad on your controller, all you're just gonna do is go to MIDI note. I'm gonna show you where that is. MIDI note. Mine's on C3. What you wanna do is you wanna click that and then over here, you're gonna go to learn. After you click learn, it's gonna learn whatever key you hit, it's gonna program. So after you click learn, hit a key on your keyboard. So you wanna do something way down here. It's linked. So that's how you, you're gonna link each instrument to a pad or to a, or to a key on your keyboard. Just make sure you, you're using FPC or something similar to this to where you can drag and drop things onto pads. You can, uh, like I said, you got two different banks. So after you program these first 16 pads into 16 keys on the controller, hit bank B, drag new instruments onto these ones, and you're good to go. One thing I didn't mention though, I just thought of, up here in the top corner of the plugin where all the plugins have, you're gonna to wanna to click this before you even start and go all the way down to presets and then empty. Once you do that, say yes, if that pops up, I don't know why mine does that. After you say yes to that, you now have an empty, everything's empty. So you don't have the preset uh, drums that are on there. Since the presets are really bad drums anyways, you don't wanna use those. So after they're empty, then from here you can you find this kick, you drag it on the first one. You got a nice kick. Click MIDI note, learn, then hit a pad if you want. Say I want to learn it to this one. It's now linked. Go to the second one. Nothing's linked at all. I'm gonna drag the snare to the second one. MIDI note, learn. There you go. It's that simple, man. It's, it's really easy stuff. So quick review on what we've done. We've linked every fader or as many faders as you want to the the faders on the actual controller. And to do that again was to click the link to multi or multi link to controllers. You need to click that button, move whatever controller. And the same goes with the knobs. If you have knobs like this that turn, same thing with those. You need to click multi link to controller. You're gonna go down, touch the knob that you want to link, and then simply move it on your on your uh, control surface. So that'll link whatever to Fruity Loops. Now, after after you get all that done, and uh, by the way, this is like a preset that I use all the time. Pops open with the first uh, the first instruments I have are the FPC. Now I have different drums in there for half my keyboard and the second half is on this one. So I have two different FPCs with different drum kits that I've already preset. After I preset those and I've done all the faders, the knobs, everything, I go up to save, save as, and then I save it where the templates are. Go into templates, go into other, or you can actually just save it right into here. I usually go into, uh, there it is, minimal. So you're gonna go to save as, templates, minimal and then I save my preset there and so every time you open up Fruity Loops it should just open up the last one you had um, if not just go to new from template and it'll be right there so this way you don't have to reprogram all the faders all the knobs all the drum kits it's already there just make sure when you're in the middle of making the beat you don't save over it save as a, a new a new beat usually right when I open a project I go up save as and I save it wherever I want to save. Okay, another question I had from someone was uh, the arpeggiator and the roll on the actual keyboard going into Fruity Loops. I noticed when I first got it, the timing was off. So when you go to use an arpeggiator, say you got, you got to click arpeggiator and you'll notice the tempo in Fruity Loops usually doesn't match the one on the keyboard. Now to fix that, it's, it's really easy. I mean, it's, it's simple. It took me a while to figure it out, but it's simple. On the, on the keyboard, you're gonna see a shift button. It's right here. It'll also say learn underneath it. You're gonna hold shift, and then you're gonna hit the tempo button. 
which is roll. So, once you hold them together, shift, roll, you're gonna notice one of the, the drum pad lights are lighting up. That's showing you your tempo. Over here, it's gonna tell you what tempo you got it set on. Now, you can either do a tap tempo with the pad, or you can just dial in a tempo that you want. So say your, your BPM is set at whatever, 120. So cool, set. Next, hit this, saves it. And then that should go back to the, the beginning thing you had. Now, the keyboard will be set up at whatever tempo you set up Fruity Loops. So match them together. That way when you're using the arpeggiator, it's perfectly on beat with what you're doing. Same with the roll button. If you're gonna use drum rolls and whatnot, Um, just make sure that the drum rolls are same tempo as, as what you're working with in Fruity Loops or else it's not gonna it's not gonna be perfectly in sync it's gonna be all messed up okay more on arpeggiators I'm gonna show you how to let's see there's different settings for the arpeggiators you can go through uh, eight different pads or you can go through four of the pads in the arpeggiator you can even go up four octaves in the arpeggiator, so say you're holding one key, it's going to climb up four octaves high. So, to do this, you're going to hit, yeah, okay, sorry, I'm trying to figure it out too. Okay, you're going to hold shift, just like we were doing with the tempo thing, you're going to hold shift, and then you're going to hit the arp button, and after you do that, a screen's going to pop up, and it's going to be this. So, this one's going to say 32. This is how quick your arpeggiator is. Let me open up the instrument first. So I got it on 12. Let's move it up to 24. Uh, 48. Uh, 96. You can see how fast the pads are moved to. Obviously one of my light, two of my lights went out, but yeah, I don't know, it's about $400. So say you want to make it 16, cool. Now you're going to hit the plus sign. There's another window. This is going to say gate. This is going to, I'll just play it for you. Pretty much if you can't hear the difference, it just extends the notes. If you turn it all the way down to zero, it kind of cuts off the notes and there's no delay. Move it all the way up to 126. It's got a lot more delay and the notes longer. After gate, you're gonna hit the plus button again. There's a swing you can do up to, man, what can you do? I think you can swing it up to 126 as well. Kinda gives it a swing tempo, you know, like, kinda bluesy. Uh, arp mode, you're gonna go, this one I think it stands for poly. Uh, it starts on up, to where the arps just climb upward, down. So say you're holding a chord. Or if you want to go up with it. A whole bunch of different things. Man, I don't want to go through all of them, but here's an ARP octave. So say you want to just go up one octave, you're going to hold the notes. It's going to play one single octave. Kind of just loop it for you. Let's go to four. And next one is ARP length. And go up to eight, it's gonna do eight of the pads. And so you wanna do one. So you, you get the point. I mean, different settings for the arpeggiator. It's pretty cool once you figure it out. Um, I rarely use the thing, I'm not really all into it. So, uh, I mean, if it helps you out, cool. If it doesn't, then oh well, it's worth, worth showing. I mean, one person asked a question about it, so I figured I'd show all you guys. Alright guys, that's pretty much a wrap for today. Um, if you guys have any more questions about Fruity Loops and the Impulse 61, just let me know. I mean, I'll, I've mean, i pretty much got everything figured out with it, so if you guys got a question, I'm pretty sure I can answer it. If not, then I'll do some more research on it and try to read the manual and stuff. I mean, there's really no written manual for Fruity Loops and the Impulse, so I mean, you kind of just got to figure it out. If you buy it, play around with it, explore, just hit buttons, see what they do, you know? And once you figure it out, be sure to save your project in Free Loops so you don't have to keep doing the process over and over again. Okay?